today we are going to do a swatch test with the Jerry's Petite water Watercolor Box. And I've had this set for a really long time. I believe it was given to me when I spent like an exorbitant amount of money at Jerry's a while back. But my friend Kabocha pointed out that these paints have some interesting properties. They behave very differently from your standard cheap watercolors. So I'd ignored this set for a few years because like, oh great, another cheap watercolor set. Oh boy. But based on her recommendation, we're going to take a look at them today. So there are eight colors inside this little metal tin and these colors are nestled. They're like they're like little cakes basically because the pants, they were pre-made and then inserted into these pans, if that makes sense. And I'm trying to get this stupid little brush out and it just doesn't want to come out. I'd like to be able to get the whole thing, this whole plastic. Yeah, there we go. Come on. So as you guys can see, there's actually a lot of room in this little tin. Now I wouldn't say, oh, buy the tin just so you can, you know, fill it with your own paints, but you could um, put these directly in here and have a lot more room than this. Or you could even put like a row of half pans underneath and put this on top or one of those soccer Koi travel watercolor brushes down here. There's a lot you could, a lot of wasted space and a lot that could be done with this set that isn't really utilized. But that's okay because it's a pretty cheap little set. I think it retails for like 10 to $12. And sometimes they will send it out as a freebie. So we're gonna test it as is. And we're gonna do that in a couple of different ways. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to swatch it. And I'm going to go ahead and swatch it for you guys. And then I'll tell you what Sam told me or what Kabocha told me. So we spritzed it to activate it. You get eight colors. It's a more like a primary assortment of colors than say um, a, a traditional artist assortment. So you get like a yellow green, you get a scarlet red, you get a, um, I wanna say like a cadmium yellow hue, sort of yellow. You get a Chinese white, which I'm going to use a waterproof. We'll let that dry for a few minutes before we attempt to put the white on. We get a black. We get a brown. Kind of a weak brown. We get a looks like an ultramarine blue and then what looks like maybe a cerulean blue. So this is an unusual set in that usually with artist grade mixing sets, you're going to get a warm red, a cool red, a warm yellow, a cool yellow, a warm blue, a cool blue, and then maybe a sepia or a yellow ochre, um, maybe a black, maybe an indigo, uh, generally colors that will help you mix other colors a little more effectively. Often you'll get a dioxine purple. Um, with this set though, we, that's why I call it more like your standard, your, your fourth grade watercolor set where, and that white's pretty, pretty pathetic. You, you don't necessarily get colors that mix well. You get one represent, one representative from every color family. And usually with sets like that, they'll include a purple and an orange and stuff like that. So it's kind of an unusual set. Now what Sam had told me is that these colors for the type of watercolor they are, the cheapness of watercolor they are, supposedly very highly pigmented and they supposedly granulate a lot. And I'm not really seeing this here on the cellulose based fluid easy block paper. But you know, the colors have had a little bit more time to soak in. So we'll try it again. And she had said that it made them interesting to use because with cheap watercolors, you don't normally get a lot of granulation. You get a lot of like um, glossiness from the pigments. She was positing that the granulation was coming from the fact that these have a lot of pigment or hers have a lot of pigment and not a lot of um, binder. And these do have a decent color load for inexpensive watercolors. Um, I'm not seeing the granulation that she was talking about. That's why I actually grabbed the gum Arabic because she had suggested that 
I do a swatch test with the gum Arabic and without the gum Arabic. But I guess what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to let these dry and then see if it granulates. Because what she was suggesting is that we use the gum Arabic to help sort of smooth out and make the paint a little easier to use. All right, guys, so these colors have had a chance to dry. Now, I do see some granulation, but not, I mean, not like an unreasonable amount of granulation. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to try using these the way Kabocha suggested. So we've got some never really used, but very yellowed gum Arabic. And I've got a little sample cup. It's been cleaned out. So we're gonna go ahead and get this sucker open and put a little bit of gum Arabic. And to be honest, I don't really use gum Arabic too often. So you seem to have dried where we activate those. And she'd said, dip it in the gum Arabic and then pick up your paints. And gum Arabic is used as a binder. So we're gonna try, yeah, look, it's much lighter now. Like even directly from the palette, it's much, much lighter. So I guess if you find that your paints are maybe coming on too strong, although I don't normally recommend just working directly from the pan, you can use a little bit of gum Arabic like we're doing here today. And see, this is this is something I've done to myself. See how streaky it is? That's from all that binder, the gum Arabic we've just added. So you wanna be careful with how much. All right, so using that much gum Arabic, it was very, it felt very soapy, it felt very, um, very goopy. Um, while I do see a difference between the two, I don't really see a substantial difference. And I'm wondering if maybe the ones Kabocha had were maybe manufactured in a different company or um, I don't know, just had a different pigment load. It would be interesting to trade sets with her um, and see how hers differ from mine. So Thank you guys so much for watching this little swatch box video of the Jerry's Petite watercolor box. Um, if you guys are interested, let me know and I'll do a field test of these, um, which is really just gonna be more like a challenge. Um, if Otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and move on and uh, I don't know, maybe re-gift them or something. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, useful, and inspiring. If you're looking for more watercolor tutorials, you can check out my watercolor playlist here on this channel. And if you're looking for even more great watercolor stuff, make sure you check out my blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. So have a great day, guys. Bye.